Hello, welcome to another installment of Practical Farms, where we take a look at different farms and make them more practical depending on where we are in each phase of the game, whether it be early game, mid game, or late game, to where they're more cost effective to suit our needs. Today, we're going to be taking a look at moss farms. These are particularly helpful if you want to produce lots of bone meal, or if you want decorative blocks or moss carpets, and of course the wonderful flowering azalea trees. So let's get started and I'll show you how to make one step by step. Now before we begin building the actual farm it's helpful to know how moss spreads. Here below you see the pattern of how moss spreads from a central moss block indicated by the central gray square to all the surrounding area. If you bone meal a moss block, it has a chance to spread to neighboring natural blocks such as stone, dirt, grass, and other naturally occurring stone variants, but will not spread to areas that are modified, such as smooth stone, stone brick, or the like. As you can see, the pattern in which moss spreads goes out three in each direction for a total of seven blocks by seven blocks and leaves out the corner blocks. And when you bone meal it, it varies anywhere from a few blocks to the entire area possible. It's a random chance, so it's just a matter of luck. Making an automatic moss farm is not a difficult thing to do. You start with a stone generator that automatically pushes out a layer of stone in a 7x7 seven seven pattern. You then dispense bone meal into a centrally located piece of moss and then use the pistons to break the moss blocks and then collect them. Now if you're early game you aren't able to create a fully automatic moss farm but we can make a semi-automatic one that works pretty well. That can be upgraded to fully automatic when you're ready. We begin with an 11 by 9 platform and then create a 9 by 9 containment area around the edge. This will be the area in which we bone meal our moss and collect all of the moss blocks as they break. On the back side we want to come up one block and create a wall at the top here and then continue around and make the rest of the containment area two blocks tall as well. This will prevent the moss blocks from flying out of control around the area and keep them all within the centralized area to make it easier to collect. The next thing we need to do is make an automatic stone generator. This is done by simply placing a row of pistons along the back, seven in total, putting a wall on either side and across the back, and then water logging each piston. Once we've done that, we need to place a layer of blocks around the edge of this. And you'll see that this creates a 1 by 7 channel. We then come back to the central block of this channel and place one lava bucket in the middle. Now what happens is, whenever there is lava flowing into water, it converts the water into solid stone what will happen is we are going to have a timer that will extend the pistons and push the solid stone out into this area. However, we want it to stop when it reaches the edge. So in order to do that, we need to place an immovable block here at the end. Now in Bedrock Edition, Obsidian is the primary block you use for this. I believe in Java you can use furnaces and there might be some others, but I don't play Java so I'm not really sure exactly which blocks are immovable there. But if you play Java, you probably know what those blocks are. Now that we have a row of obsidian in place, we need to come back over here and cap our lava so we don't accidentally fall in, and then come in and put our timer to control our pistons. Now creating a timer for our pistons is pretty simple. Since we're still early game, we want to use a basic torch repeater clock. If you'd like to understand more about how these work, I have a video and I will place a card at the end of the video so you can take a look at that and understand better how this clock works. 
begin with the redstone dust at the end. Then come in and place repeaters pointing this direction on the top. And paste facing the opposite direction on the bottom. And then place a redstone torch here and a lever here. You can actually place this lever on any one of the solid blocks. That is up to you. This turns the timer off and on. Now in order for the stone generator to work properly, we need to have a very precise timing on our repeaters. Extend each of them to three tick delay on each repeater except for the last one. It only needs two ticks. Now I found these settings through trial and error and I found that this is the most effective settings for these repeaters. If you find that you are having cobblestone generated instead of solid stone, just add an extra tick delay to one of the repeaters until it's no longer generating cobblestone. Once you have this in place, come over onto this side and place some redstone dust off the end of this torch and up onto each of these blocks that are behind the pistons. Now that our redstone dust is in place, let's check and make sure our stone generator works. Now I like to see what's going on inside of my stone generator, so I like to replace this block with a trap door so the water doesn't come out. And we can see the stone being generated and the pistons pushing it into our containment area. And now you notice it is full. Now that the stone generator is complete, we need to put in our moss, a flushing system, and a way to collect all our drops. So first, come into the center of your containment area, place a temporary block and then a moss block on top, and then lining up with this, come over to this side, place your dispenser, add a water bucket to this dispenser, come up on top, place a stone button, and you're now ready to go. To make this work, all you have to do is stand on top of the dispenser, bone meal the moss block, press the button to dispense the water, press the button to collect the water, and you're ready for the next round. Now if you notice that grass grows on top of the moss block, or a moss carpet, or an, a tree, you do have to break it manually but the rest will be automatically collected at the end. Do it again. Dispense the water. Collect the water. Break any block that's on top of the moss block. Now at this time, if you want to, you can go and collect these manually, or you can create an automatic collection system, which is fairly simple to do. All you need to do is have a powered rail, some regular rail, a minecart with hopper, some hoppers to collect, and a chest for them to go into as well. Come in and remove the first row of blocks here at the end of the containment area so that we can have access to put in a rail line with minecart with hopper. Then come in one more and go another row deeper leaving the blocks on the end so we have a place for our rail car to stop. Dig out an area here to place your chest. Then come around the side to place your hopper. You will need to crouch place to put them into the chest. I like to put two of them so it unloads faster. Replace your solid block there, and there, and there, and here. And then place your powered rails, one on each end. Put a lever to turn the rail on. Place the rails on top of the hopper, and along the line. Add your minecart with hopper on the end and it will collect all the moss drops. And you'll notice they feed into our double chest. Ah. 
and to make this work you just rinse and repeat and it will collect all of your moss for you. Now our semi-automatic moss farm is pretty great. Once you've reached the nether you might be ready to make this fully automatic and it's a pretty simple conversion to do as well. So let me show you how to turn your semi-automatic moss farm into fully automatic. Now because this farm is going to be fully automatic and we won't be necessarily standing around it's a good idea to add an extra layer to our containment wall so we don't lose any of our moss drops. So all you have to do is just come and place them all the way around. And then remove our dispenser for our water and then replace it with a new dispenser at one higher level. We also will need to raise our moss block one as well. Now there are three things we have to do with our automatic farm in order for it to continually work. First is to have a way to dispense bone meal into this moss block. The second is to have a way to break anything that might form on top of it. And then third, we need a way to both dispense and then collect the water from our wash system. Let's start with the bone meal dispenser. First come in and place a couple temporary blocks here. Then come in and place a dispenser that is now facing into our moss block. I'll temporarily remove it just so you can see how it looks. Then come underneath and place a solid block right here remove your temporary block and then place a solid block here and here then you'll need to place some redstone dust behind the dispenser and then on each of these two blocks this is our automatic bone meal dispenser and it's ready to go the second thing we need to do is to break any moss carpets or trees or grass that grow on top of this because if we don't the bone meal will not cause the moss to spread if this is not removed. So let's go ahead and place a couple temporary blocks here. Remove them. Come in underneath and place a piston. Remove that temporary block place in a solid block on top of our dispenser, a glass block on top of this redstone dust, and then extend our redstone line to our piston. However, we want to make sure that the piston does not extend until after the bone meal has been dispensed and the moss has a chance to have grown. So place a repeater here and put it on a three tick delay. This will ensure that the bone meal will have time to be dispensed into the moss block and spread to the neighboring stone below and then extend to break any grass or trees or moss carpets that are on top of this block. Now we need to have our wash system automatically dispense. This requires us not only to dispense the water out but then collect it after it's had a chance to wash away any of our moss carpets, trees, or grass that has been grown. All you have to do is simply extend this line from here to the dispenser. Then come around the other side and put redstone dust all the way around here as well. Reaching our wash dispenser from both sides. Now the thing is we want to have a delay between the time that our initial pulse dispenses the water and the time in which it will recollect it. The best way to do that is with a couple of repeaters that we'll place on this side and give them both a full four tick delay for a total of eight ticks of delay. So as you can see what will happen is when a pulse reaches this point it will dispense the water 
the pulse will come around this way simultaneously, but then be delayed for eight ticks, giving that dispenser enough time to wash away anything that's on the surface and then recollect the water so the stone replacing it will be ready to be bone mealed. Now we need to tie this into a timing system. However, this timer is not going to do the job. We need to have a much more precise timing on how this is going to work. And the only way to do that is going to be using a combination of etho hopper clocks and rising edge monostable circuits. If you do not know how these circuits work, I have created a couple tutorials to explain them. I'll make sure that there is a pinned comment down below that shows you how they work. I'll also have a little card in the corner towards the end of this video so you can go and check them out to fully understand better how these work together. But for now, let's go ahead and come in here and remove our simple torch repeater clock so that we can go ahead and put in our hopper clocks. First thing we need to do is place our first hopper clock right here. We'll go ahead and put in a temporary block, put a hopper facing into it, remove the temporary block, crouch place a hopper into this one, put a comparator on either side, solid block, solid block, redstone dust, a piston, redstone dust, a piston, and then place a solid redstone block there. This is our etho hopper clock. The number of items we place into this is very precise. It needs to be five items. You can use any item you want, but five is an important number. It gives enough time for our stone generator to perfectly form the stone. Now if you find that because of different delays on your server or in your machine causes there to be cobblestone generated, add one more item at a time until you have it generating only natural stone. Now if you want to turn this off, all you have to do is just place a lever on one of the pistons and when you flick the switch it will stop it. So now that our timer is set for our stone generator, we want to have it also operate our automatic bone meal and wash system. But we don't want to have it bone meal every single time the pistons extend a new piece of stone. We want to wait until every single piece of moss has been removed. And that could be potentially seven rows of moss. So what we need to do is have another hopper clock that only sends a pulse after seven different pulses of our first clock are done. And there's an easy way to make this work. What we do is extend a redstone line off of this side of our first hopper clock and have it feed into a monostable circuit. Now if you're interested in knowing more about monostable circuits, in particular this one is a rising edge monostable circuit, I've made a video that explains them and if you're interested, I will put a pinned comment down below, as well as a link to the video in our description. So you can take a look at that once you're done with this. Now, once we've drawn our redstone line into a piston with a gravity block on top, we need to put a repeater on this side that then feeds into a solid block. And then on this side, we need to put a redstone torch and then we'll place our hopper clock lined up right here. We build it very similarly to how we built the other one. Having two hoppers feeding in into each other but having this hopper in the same level as this redstone torch. This redstone torch is going to lock this hopper to where it will only allow an item to go from here to the next hopper whenever a cycled pulse of our first clock is completed. 
And if we place seven items in this hopper, it will then take seven pulses of the first clock for this one to complete one cycle of this. It will then send a pulse to our bone meal and wash system so it will know when to activate the dispensers. We place our comparator so it reads this hopper on this side, feeding into a solid block. We place our redstone dust. We then add a piston and then do the same thing on this side here. Place solid block, a comparator, another solid block with the redstone dust on top and a piston facing towards us. And then a block of redstone and then place an output on this side of the clock as well. This will also feed into a rising edge monostable circuit so that it will send a single pulse instead of a long signal to our bone meal dispenser and washer. We need to place our piston, gravity block, and then come in with our repeater. And then we need to stair step our redstone line up to the dispenser system. Actually, we don't need this block, so I'm going to go ahead and remove it, but you could leave it if you want. This will work just fine. And there we have it. It is tied in. All we need to do is put in seven items in this hopper. The reason we're putting seven is because we have seven rows of stone to bone meal. Now, if you decide to make your farm smaller, all you have to do is adjust the number of items in your second hopper clock to match the number of rows in your moss generating area. That's it. I believe everything is ready to go. All we have to do is turn it on. As you can see, the number of items is counting down one by one with each pulse of our stone generator. And when this reaches zero, it will send a pulse up to our dispensers. So let's take a look. There it is, automatically dispensing the bone meal and the water, and it's pushing it along to the end where our minecart with hopper will be able to pick it up. Now, any blocks that don't get pushed out by the water, as the stone extends, it will push them along as well. And the next time that the water is dispensed, it will push it out as well. and it's collecting plenty of moss, azalea trees, and moss carpets. And there you have it, the fully automatic moss farm. It really is easy to build, and it produces quite a bit of moss and trees for your world. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and it helps you out, so that you can put it to use in somewhere in your world. And if it has, I'd appreciate it if you left a comment down below, letting us know how you used it. Specifically, I'd like to know if you use the manual or the automatic version. But on that note, I'd like to say thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next one. But until then, this is Texas PK. Be good to each other. Bye!